Hey, this is Justin with Woodmiser South in Noonan, Georgia. I work in customer service and sales. Today I'm going to be showing Triple L Rustic Design on how to use their new 40 wide sawmill. Yeah. I'm going to show you some quick alignment type stuff just in case you're ever questioning what's going on with the mill as far as measurements. I'd always recommend let one of the service guys work on it because we can knock it out in 15 minutes, you know. So this is where I get to kind of show you some of the controls too. So I'm coming back to the very, very first bed rail, right? So all these bed rails are adjustable, unlike the 15. The 15 is everything's welded in there. You can't adjust it. So if you bend it, you got to replace it almost. They're cut and weld. On this one, you can adjust stuff with wrenches, fix it. So right now my blade's at 7 and 17 30 seconds, right? So I want to get it up to about 12 inches, a good reference point for me. I like to use 12 inches because on the calibration on this, set at 12 is 12 inches. So I keep everything around 12 inches when I'm measuring. Some people do 15, some people do 10. You can do whatever you want. I like to keep it at 12 because when I have to program the actual height in the computer, it's at 12. So I might as well keep it all in one, one thing and I have to move it up and down, right? So I'm going to go to 12 inches where I see visually there. I can, if I, if I get close to 12, I can press this, this down arrow right here and it'll go straight to 12, right? So no matter where I'm trying to go, right? If I want to get to 11, I just press that down arrow, bam. It, it'll find the closest inch by press, oh. pressing that down arrow, right? So I'm going to go to 12. So I'm going to get closer to 12 and hit that down arrow and it should find 12 for me, right? Okay. Now, if it ever reads like 12 and one thirty second or something like a 30 second off, it's kind of in the margin of error for that transducer. How that's working, how it, how it's doing that, like uh, Simple Set doesn't know where the bottom is. Like you're used to, like saying, you know, I got to slide the four to the one and figure out where here I need to end up here. Well, this is doing it for you off this transducer right here. So it's got this rod that's reading a little magnet and it tells that brain where it's at. So now it knows where the bottom is because of that transducer. So that being said, I'm going to use 12 as my reference point, right? Let's say it says 12 here, but there it didn't say 12 on the scale. Well, it's really easy to adjust, but you could just loosen these two bolts right here and here, and you can move that guard up and down and get it where you need it. It, it can move about a half inch, so you shouldn't be that far out on the you know, A lot of times you're not going to be using that scale very often for nothing anymore because you got this now. Yeah. But if you ever had a manual reason to look at that, there it is, right? And to marry those two together, if I press this up arrow, it's like my main menu button. And then I've got calibrate head and all that. And that's how I could calibrate that head to that scale. But the blade's the boss, right? No matter what these two things say, I gotta measure that blade to the bed rail. Usually I use that bottom tooth as my reference point to the bed rail. And I use a straight edge. So I'm gonna get a straight edge out real quick. I don't wanna turn any wrenches until I measure every bed rail. When I'm teaching people how to do alignment over the phone, I always tell them get a pad of paper out and go to every single bed rail and measure left to right, left to right, all the way down through the, off those bottom teeth. So if I'm here, I'm gonna pull that head back just a bit, sorry. So see how the bottom tooth's touching 12 there? And then over here, I got a 16th inch rise, that's normal. So I want 12, 12 and a 16th. The saw, even on the 15, the saw head torques down because it's cantilevered. And it, that would make it when it's cutting 12, 12, all the way down through there, right? Okay. So this first bed rail looks right. Now let's say, let's say it was wrong, right? It was 12 and 11 something, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't change it yet because I don't know, is that problem in my saw head tilt or is that problem in the bed rail, right? So what I do is go down to the next bed rail, measure it, go down to the next bed rail. I do every single bed rail and make sure they're all the same to each other. That's what I need first. The worst thing you can do is take a four foot level and go down there and level all these bed rails. Okay. Right? Because then it takes everything out of square. So you want to measure left or right and all the way down through there and write down all your measurements. That way you know what to fix and get them all the same, right? Even if they're wrong, mm -hmm. in that, because of the saw head tilt could be out too. On a brand new mill, you're probably never going to have to do this, right? But on a used mill, you bought it 20 years ago, this is very important to check all this because that's the first thing you'll notice when you get it at home. But um, so the saw head tilt is adjusted on the other side over here, right? So if I can, it's pretty easy how to adjust a bed rail, right? But on the saw head tilt, that's all adjusted down here on this side. This only is for the LT40s and the 50s, by the way. 
in the old nine, uh, like the old 1994 LT30s, things like that. They're all adjusted down here. So you got oh, okay. you got a stop, you know, jam nut, and you got your outer bolt or nut. So if you loosen the inner one and tighten the outer one, that's going to raise the saw head up. Now, as you're raising that up, your hydraulic contactor, that 12 volt contactor, mm -hmm. is getting closer to the mill down here. So you got to readjust that. And then also you got, if you look right there, you got two stop bolts, right? So if you go too high up on that head and that stop bolt start rubbing against this round rail here, yeah. it's going to act like a brake and you can't, the head won't go forward and back. And that's what's causing you not to move. So we hope we don't have to get that. You shouldn't have to. So I'm just showing you yeah. everything so you know how it works. So that one day I am on the phone with you, you know how to yeah. fix it in a few seconds. You clearly are the person to call, I can tell that yeah. already though. There is Thank you. Issues. So usually what I'll do to check those backstops, I'll raise them up. Remember I said the two middle ones never hardly ever move, but these two outer ones get banged up all the time. So you can raise these two guys up here and get two aluminum bars, for example. I'm gonna grab those two right there. Or two four foot levels that are identical to each other and get you a square. And just make a table out of these right here. And you could do this on your 15 as well, right? If you're curious about are they square or not. Oh, I see. Yeah. You can just go in there and check the square of them like that. And you just wanna do all four of them. Let's say I needed to adjust it. So basically you loosen that one bolt, it's three quarters on both sides, loosen that bolt and you can pivot it this way or this way, it's cammed. So it'll go in or out by where that's turned. That's how you square those up, pretty simple. 